and welcome to Legal Affairs. My name is Diamond Liddy, and I'm the public defender for the 19th Judicial Circuit. And we have a very, very relevant show. Uh, we are going to be, I didn't even realize when, when we got our guests together the, how relevant this was because it is... Victims' Rights Week at the end of the month and Sexual Assault Awareness Month, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And with us today is Bar Barbara Faulkner, who is with the State Attorney's Office, and she is the Victim Services Coordinator. Correct, mm -hmm. Barbara? Right. Okay. And then Siobhan, go, what is, Siobhan, you tell us your last name. McGordy. McGordy. Mm -hmm. um, who is the outreach coordinator for, for the sexual assault program for the sec with the state attorney's yes. office okay um before we get to um the meat of the matter and what we're going to be talking about today which is so important um barbara let's start with you and your background and what you've been doing for uh, many years so okay so i started at the state attorney's office in 1999. wow um i was harriet rose secretary she was the first victim services director right um and i worked there for several years i left for a couple of years um around 2011 but i came back in 2017 to take over as the victim services director okay so you've been victim services director since uh, 2017. Yes. yes wow. For almost six years now. Yes. Wow. Okay. It, so, um, you know, uh, the majority of the public does not know. Um, thank goodness. Right. <laughs> what um, uh, a victim services director does, and why you have a victim services director at the state attorney's office and the legality of it, and we'll get to that in a minute, but just okay. tell us, please, what you do for the state attorney's office and for the entire community and circuit. Okay, sure. So we have, I have a staff of 21 victim advocates that are stationed throughout the four counties mm -hmm. within the state attorney's offices. And we also, uh, we're unique in the state that we are also the Sexual Assault Assistance Program, the Rape Crisis Program. And why is that unique? Um, most Rape Crisis Programs are nonprofits um, okay. that run in the community. But ours started in 1981. There was very little here at all. Uh, we were modeled on the program out of Palm Beach County. Right. And that's where Harriet Rowe came in and came here. Um, and at first, we only worked sexual assault cases for the state attorney's right. office. Right, right. And then it became... Um, well, we, and I were, worked there. That, okay, that that's the all we were doing, right, yes. Right. And then VOCA came along, which was a Victim of Crimes Act grant that came about um, where money is taken from any federal um, defendants, criminals that are convicted, that goes into a huge trust fund federally, and all of that money goes to all the states to provide victim advocacy and other services. Right. So we were able to hire victim advocates to cover all the other types of cases, homicides and everything, right down to misdemeanors and juvenile right, cases right so um, an advocate is your person if you're a victim of a crime this is the person that's going to contact you um, right after the arrest is made we'll be calling the victim on the case from all the way like I said from misdemeanor all the way up through the worst you know, homicides and sexual assault cases we work with that victim through the case because it is confusing for most victims sure. coming in. They've never sure. had any association with the criminal Thank justice goodness. system. Right, right. Uh, so we are there to explain what's going to happen, how the system is going to work. We can get them in touch with their attorney because the attorneys are in court a lot. So they, they don't have the time that they would like to have to, to talk to every victim. So we right. are that liaison for the victim. Um, and we've also developed through the years a lot more community resources we partner with. So say you're a veteran and you've come into the system the first time right. we can, and you've never hooked up with services, we can get you community services that right. could help you out also. Right. So um, that's a lot of what we do. We get the restitution, um, which is if you've had financial losses, we can get that, you know, make sure that the attorney has that to request at the time of sentencing. Okay. And kind of 
um, I guess to hold the victim's little paw or whatever, yes. so to speak, so, through so, the system. Um, yes, so our attorney, um, I mean, our state attorney, Tom Beckadall, um, has called us hand holders. We're the hand holders we <laughs> right. are. And that really is what we do, too. I mean, we're there to provide Which the emotional great. support. Right. Right, through the, because sitting there in court, not knowing what's happening, just having a person there that you don't have to tend to because it's not your family that you're going to worry about being there with you. Right. Just somebody you know is right there for you that doesn't have a stake in the in what happens in the outcome. Right, right. Well, um, Barbara, how many? I know I don't know the numbers actually of mm -hmm. uh, cases that you all. I know our numbers, but right. I don't know your numbers of the cases that you handled last year. How? What percentage or what is the number of cases last year? Let's say that had victims um, right so we worked with because we do keep statistics on everything right. we worked with over 8,000 victims last year wow um, so a lot and of you my, did that with how many um, again? 20 21 advocates wow. so we um, yeah they're stretched I mean there, there can be 400 to 600 cases that an advocate will have but a lot some you know some only want to communicate by mail or some tell us right up front what they want and then don't want to be too involved right so, Right. But we're always there for the ones that that need to call us and want need our help. We're going to make sure that we're there to provide the services. Now, is this 24 hours or or Yes, yeah, so we do have we have a 24-hour helpline um, for both. We have a 24-hour helpline for our sexual assault victims, which is an anonymous confidential helpline that anybody can call whether you want to report a crime or whether you just need to hear from somebody because right. all of our advocates are trained sexual assault counselors as well as um, victim advocates for the court system so they can they they're there wow. for crisis intervention and to listen but we also have a 24-hour um, line through the state attorney's office that if you're wondering what's going on with your case you can call now that's a recorded line but somebody will call you back and we well, also, do they call the main number of the state attorney's office um, and then it's connected to you or no there is an 800 number so it's 1-800-569-7273 which is the state attorney line that they for advocacy so oh, I see. if they need to reach an advocate and they're having trouble getting a hold of their advocate we're going to respond to that I that gotcha. line wow so no that's oof. no and, yeah. and let's talk about sexual assault for a, for a moment yes um how long give us your background oh wow. please so i've been with this program about seven years okay. um i've been in different various roles but kind of the same um working with sexual assault cases only and just last year um, i recently came to just being the outreach coordinator as far as handling all the outreach and, and sharing our program speaking giving any presentations um, going to community events and just kind of being out in the community instead of having a caseload um, but I was able to understand in a better sense from having a caseload of what to share with the community so I've been doing that for about seven years um, I go to different meetings and I'll do events um, I'm housed over at the college uh, at Indian River State College. Oh, okay. So just uh, two years ago, Dr. Moore, who's the president, uh, allowed our program to be on campus. And at first, they were going to put us in public safety because that's where human services is and that's right, where right. the victim advocates typically come out of. But he said, no, I want wraparound services. So he put us actually at the KSU Center, which is where the cafeteria is. So we're right outside. Like, we see students constantly day in day. Um, day in, day out, uh, we'll kind of say hello and, and say that we're here for you if you have any questions. Um, like Barb mentioned, we do referrals and we have resources. So when I go to these meetings, I'm able to obtain all of this information and I can share it with the advocates in all the counties and, and even with any of the students or anyone outside of the college. So it's open to the public. Wow. I, and I did not realize that. Mm -hmm. uh, that that's, yeah. It's been awesome. Yeah. How, how many years now? It's just since Dr. Moore has been in? Two years. Yeah, yeah since two Dr. Years. Moore came on board. Because um, Indian River State College was always our fiscal agent for our sexual assault funds mm -hmm. oh, and our county know. funds. Mm -hmm. okay. But we didn't have too much involvement on campus. Um, Dr. Moore's come in like gangbusters. <laughs> yes. 
with um, wanting to provide mental health resources, resources right. for sexual assault and everything. Mm -hmm. So we've been really grateful to have that mm -hmm. space. And, and you're housed in the cafeteria on, on campus, on the main campus. Yes, yeah, so we're on Massey mm -hmm. campus, okay. uh, Monday through Friday, 830 to 5. And then just recently last year, we uh, provided once a month office hours at the other campus as well. Um, I was going to say, what about the other yeah, campus? So yeah, so we've had a couple students come by. Um, it's been just keeping it open and having set dates as far as, you know, we're there if they want to come talk to us or just get some information or just come say hi because we're trying to keep that open door policy and so don't have to come say hi to us just to have something happen like we can give you resources and you know help with preventing anything or right. or just you know talking to you about what healthy relationships are you know what consent is you know what's the signs to look out for things like that so we're Try to be proactive as well. And so you're on campus, what, five days a week? Five days a week. And the main campus. And then once a month, we're on Pruitt, uh, Dixon Hendry, which is in Okeechobee, uh, the Chastain campus in Stewart, right. and then the Mueller campus in Vero. Oh, so that... today is my Pruitt campus office hours. So okay. I'm there from one to four. Okay. Yes. And how many people um, are with you on the main campus? Um, my coworker, her name is Alicia Roll. She's our prevention educator. So she does everything before and I do everything after. So okay. when we do presentations, we'll, you know, I'll share what our program is and kind of my role. And then she'll share like her role as far as, you know, healthy relationships, uh, any type of prevention work. Uh, we're, we have an empowerment um, workshop that we do for 12 weeks. We'll have a girls empowerment where they do something with Pace Center for Girls and they'll do a 12 week mentorship. Right. So she's very involved in that and, and we're trying to um, get the college more involved in sort of healthy relationship workshops as well. Well, so I'm curious, how, how many, uh, on the, let's just talk about the main campus. Okay. How, how many students just drop in a day? A day, uh, it varies, it depends on the day, it depends right. on what's going on. Sure. Um, but there is a student engagement um, team there that we are very good have relationships with and they'll just come say hi because we're right down the hallway from them. We'll have students just pop their head in and be like, how's your day going? Or I'm here today or something like just, right. you know, we'll say good morning to everyone when we come in the cafeteria. It's just kind of having that friendly communication. It's not right. something scary to come talk to us. It's, right. it's, you know, we're a safe place and it's not, you know, something doesn't have to happen to you for you to come talk to us. No, no, no. Because I it's great it. for you to right. have resources beforehand and you can share it with your friends, family. Um, we'll give away giveaways with our helpline number on it. Be like, share this with your friends, you know, tell them we're here. Like, we do workshops. We have fun stuff, too. Just come <laughs> say hi to us. So we're trying to keep that, like, we're not scary. It's not something, you know, hard to talk about with us. We're, right. we're understanding and we'll be there for you regardless. So it, it's, it's, um, proactive before something bad happens yes. more than, but I'm sure if something bad happens, if so, mm -hmm. if, a, uh, if someone is sexually assaulted mm -hmm. or whatever, they they come to you too yes. and say, what do I do? I exactly. kept this inside for two days now. Mm -hmm. I, I need help. I need direction, whatever. Yeah. And the one nice thing about our program is we work with non-reporting and reporting victims. So if, if a case happened neons ago, like 20 years ago, we still will give them services. We'll work with them if they want to report it. We'll work with them if they don't wish to report it. We'll work with them regardless. So we don't have any, we don't say no. Right. So that's pretty much I, I it. I got you. Yeah. And, and, uh, and Barbara, we're going to get back to you in a second, but the it, this is Sexual Assault Awareness Month? Yes. Okay. And what... What do you have planned? <laughs> so uh, we've had some awesome libraries do uh, book displays throughout the month of April. Okay. So at the IRSC Miley Library, which is on main campus, they have a book display with all the books to you know read and then also different movies that to watch during the month. There is obviously trigger warnings because there is talks of sexual assault, rape, and any type of forms of sexual abuse. So we put that out there first, but it is something where there is powerful books by survivors, there's empowerment from like similar stories kind of in a different way. We have them at the Dixon, or I'm sorry, not Dixon, the Okeechobee Public Library. We have one at the Martin County Mor Robert Morgan Library with the IRSC and Stewart. We have them at the Mueller Campus Library, which is Brackett, and it's a county and college library as well. Gotcha. So that's been awesome to have that. And then we actually had a couple agencies light it up teal for the month of April. So Port St. Lucie Police Department have lit up their building teal for the whole month. As long the color teal. Yes, the color okay. teal. That's, our, that's the actual okay. color for well, sexual assault. I just assault. wanted to make sure. Yes. 
And so also Fort Pierce Police Department has lit up their building teal. And then also the clerk's office in St. Lucie County, they have lit up all their offices teal. And then we have two fountains in Port St. Lucie that are lit up teal as well off of Floresta and the roundabout um, over there as well. Wow. So we've it's something new we're trying and, and we're really appreciative of our agencies because we have the best people that we work with. They're always helpful. They help with our day of action, which was just last week with where we wear teal to show support. And so we've had community members, state attorney's offices, law enforcement, everyone's come together. So it's really good for survivors to see the support, social media, you know, in person, doesn't necessarily have to be on social media. So it's been really great and we have the best working relationships for sure. Now that's great. Well, how, how many, um, what percentage, if you know, of, of the, what, what, you, what did you say, 800 cases? Um, 8,000 8, cases are sexual assault. We had, well, we worked with 852. 852 yeah. She knows this is number Okay, five. so about 10%. Uh, yeah. Are sexual assault. Wow. Yeah. Wow, and St. Lucie yeah. is our biggest county um, yeah. as far as caseload. There was about 51% last year for St. Lucie County alone of uh, sexual assault of all ages and population. Of the 800? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So 400, whoa. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how many ca are there uh, victims advocates that are just earmarked to do only sexual assault? Yes, uh, yes. So um, we have at least one in e for each county. Okay. Um, so we have um, we have two victim advocates right now. There's a new children's advocacy center. I think you may have heard of that's um, working with children right. of child abuse. Right. So we have two of our advocates there as the victim advocates for the sexual assault cases because okay. we've always worked those cases, but now being in that environment with DCF and the others. So we have two advocates stationed just to work on under 16 okay. crimes. And then we have one in Okeechobee, one for um, Martin, and one for St. Lucie. Now, these advocates are a little bit kept separate from the court system advocates. Okay. Because they'll work, they go out, our advocates all go out on call if uh, somebody reports to a hospital or to uh, law enforcement that they've been raped. We're on call 24 hours for that. Okay. So we start with them well before so what, any arrest. I mean, it may not even become an arrest, right? Right, I mean, right. So right. we will stay with those victims. And then those sexual assault advocates work specifically with them to provide like enhanced services over what happens in the court system. They'll be also hooked up with a state attorney advocate. Right. So they'll have kind of two people oh, I helping them through okay. the through Because the, I'm sure the, the sexual assault counselors or advocates mm -hmm. yeah. are specially trained, aren't they? I mean, uh, yes. over and above the victim's advocates. Right. Well, all of our advocates, because they're all on call, all, all our sexual yeah. assault counselors. Oh, wow. And we used to try to have them do the dual, everybody do the dual role, but, but it's, it, it's yeah. harder to provide the, the extra services for the right. sexual assault survivors that, as a rape crisis center, we should be. So that's why we kind of started um, separating. We were able to get sexual assault funding specific and doing outreach, doing prevention, our prevention educator. Mm -hmm. um, we just got that grant last year, and that's been amazing because we've always been responsive, but to now be able to do bystander intervention kind of trainings and trying to help the community stop sexual assault before it mm -hmm. starts is well, has really... It, has uh, it decreased recently? Probably not. Probably. Uh, well, so it's COVID <laughs> played a lot of factors in a lot of our lower numbers, yeah. obviously, as everyone has said. Yeah. Um, so we, I think us being out in the community has made more people come forward right? instead of... Happening not necessarily a more of a decline in the cases. I think more people have felt comfortable coming forward because they know that we're out there and they see our faces and it's the same advocate that they work with constantly. So it's that constant person and now they have two people that they have as a team. Well, so it's increased, the, sec the occurrence of sexual assaults have increased? Yeah, last year we had 668 yeah. cases that were reported. Wow. So this year it was 852, but we believe it's because of we're out in the community more and we're People sharing are reporting more. what they never would come forward with in the past. Oh, I can, yeah, I got exactly. I got kind of thing. Now, the, the victims advocates are volunteers or are they paid? Um, they're all, we have paid staff, they're all paid staff, the ones I've mentioned, the 21 are paid staff. Okay. But we do have a volunteer program, um, and as you can imagine from the numbers we just said, <laughs> we love volunteers to right. be able to come right. in. Right make phone calls, they can sit in court. We train them completely as a victim advocate. They well, don't do sexual assault, mm -hmm. but they do 
any other type okay, of case. Okay, I want I I want to know what kind of training the victims advocates get. Okay, well, first of all, we it used to be that um, we just looked for anybody that wanted to do good, <laughs> do good in the community. No, I got that you. was how I, it was, I, I right? Want, no, I, <laughs> Back I in the day, and that was good. But things have become so much more complicated. Sure, they need sure. to know a lot more. So most of our victim advocates um, have at least a bachelor, have a bachelor's degree, or at least an okay. associate's degree. Okay. A lot of them come out of the human services program at IRSC, okay. which you know where they're learning to, they learn all of the different topics, mm -hmm. um, domestic violence, sexual assault, right there, and we like having them have that base. But then they um, they do 40 hours of training. Um, the attorney general's office offers a 40 hour training that's specific, and then we spend probably six to eight weeks really before they're on their own, um, making sure gotcha. they understand all the all the terminology, all the, you know, there's so much weird terminology in the law. Well, yeah. Like things they yeah. don't know, you know, everybody's using acronyms around them and well, all yeah, of but, that. Well, yeah, but so. a victim calls mm -hmm. and their victim advocate and says, well, I've just got a subpoena for a deposition. Well, I guess it goes. Right. Well, right. Yeah. Yes. But, but, they, but they, they need know, to know what, what that is. Right. <laughs> yeah. What is this? What do, what do I do? Where do I, you know, yes. where do I go? You know, that kind of stuff. Those are the questions. Yes. You don't want to call your victim's advocate and they say, you know, I just don't know. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what that means. That's not right. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. it out for you. No. So when we have volunteers and we have interns that come in from the college sure, too. Sure. Sure. Um, when they come in, we have a whole separate little program for them. Um, and the volunteers, they may not have the background, but right. they, but we'll have them making phone calls, and we teach them, and they're always under an advocate, working with another advocate, so that if there are questions, they can answer. But the, it's so helpful in having them make the phone calls, because a lot of times we're calling victims to find out what do you want to see happen in this case, or you know, do you need something? Is there? Okay, you know, let me ask you something. Um, you know, a legal question, if you will. Uh, a victim. Um, wants it's a let's say it's a uh, grand theft case and the victim wants the person to go to prison for the rest of their life because they stole their grandmother's ring that and she's do, now dead whatever what what ha, you know they can't right. unless they have a very serious prior criminal record they're not going to go to right. prison for the rest of their life. Where, what do you do in those circumstances, okay. and what do you have to follow that? Can you ignore that? Can they be heard anyway? Those kinds of things. Right. Yeah. So in 2018, Marcy's Law was passed, the new constitutional amendment right. for victims' rights, which said that every victim has the right to confer with their prosecutor. Um, on any kind of plea agreements or right. what they want to see happen. But it doesn't mean that the prosecutor has to do that. They, okay. it, you know, so they do, it becomes a, a discussion and they, they need to, you know, understand the limits. The prosecutor explain, you know, if there's going to be limits to what they're asking. Um, but their, their thoughts are taken into consideration and taken seriously. Um, and sometimes it goes the opposite way if they want to see something lesser happen. Sometimes rape victims are a good example in our office, mm -hmm. always respected. You know, somebody may not be able to get up on the stand and testify mm -hmm. because they've been raped and it's a oh, really, so really it, horrible it's thing. It's like re-victimization. So, oh, right. you know, so the attorneys have always listened, you know, want to listen to what the victim has to say and what they're going to be capable of doing. Are they always allowed to speak in court at the time of sentencing? Yes, yes, so they are. They Even if are. the prosecutor doesn't want them to speak. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. The victim does always have the right to speak, um, and they have the right to speak at any stage okay. of relevance and in this the system. And this is the law, correct? It's the this law. This isn't just what the 19th Circuit does. This is the law in the state of Florida, yes. correct? Yes, Okay. So um, uh, victims, well, especially after Marcy's law, mm -hmm. um, became I guess more empowered if you will to yeah. to have rights and and in the yeah. court system etc so. yeah to have, that's where the importance of having an advocate there too is making sure the rights are upheld and that's one of our jobs is mm -hmm. just you know ensuring all the steps of the way sometimes you know there's a lot of people in court and um, 
we'll be there with a victim. But the prosecutor will see us and know that we're there with a victim. That victim may want right. to speak or that victim may have some concerns. Or Right. And believe it or not, we're, we're, we've got less than five minutes to wrap this up. It always goes so fast. Oh, my God. Uh, what about in when someone's deposition is being taken? I know particularly in sexual assault cases, mm -hmm. it's very traumatic at times. Um, it, does, does the victim's advocate have a right to be there in sexual assault cases? Yes, uh, so the victim has the right to have an advocate present at any stage of the criminal process. Okay. Um, the advocate will be there for the deposition. They can't speak, obviously, during the deposition, right. but they can provide emotional support, just be there for that support for that person. And they can actually be physically in yes. the room? Mm -hmm. Okay. For any age, uh, children, adults, anything like that. And we travel, too, yes. for that. We'll travel if the, if the deposition's out of state because it's going to be where the victim is. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll right. go to make sure that they're there, mm -hmm. that they have that emotional support there. Now, what about in a petty theft? Any kind of case. Any kind <laughs> of case. <laughs> and, and the, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, any so case. the victim's advocate has a right to be in the deposition on a petty theft? Yes, on, a, okay. yeah, on every type of case. And Marcy's Law really reinforced that. We've had Statute 960 forever, which was a lot of victims' rights. We have right. many more than other states have. Marcy's Law is kind of coming along as a national movement to get a national um, victim rights amendment to the U.S. Constitution. So they're trying to make it the same in every state. But uh, we had a lot of that before, as I know right. you know. So, right. so uh, we've always kind of been there. But a lot of times we had to focus just on the person's crimes and things like that. But now Marcy's Law said every victim of any type of crime has yeah. all of these rights. Yeah. So we is, have to make sure that, that we're there yeah. providing that. And I them. have to say, um, having worked in the office at the time, mm -hmm. um, it, it, the 19th Circuit State Attorney's Office, when Bruce Colton and Robert Stone were in charge, mm -hmm. certainly were on the forefront of victims' rights. I mean, th it was not a yes. statewide thing when it got started <laughs> yeah. 100 years ago, you know, which is, which is pretty right, cool. Yeah. Once again, the 19th Circuit it rocks always, it, right? Always, <laughs> always, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we wouldn't be here without, without Bob Stone, Bruce Colton. Um, Dan Nippis from the Crime Lab oh, yeah. and uh, Dr. Massey, mm -hmm. they were the ones that went out to all the counties and mm -hmm. made sure that we had a program. And, and, and you started. get county funding and help. We still and, get county funding right. to mm -hmm. this day, yeah. No, so. I know. No, I know. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I will say, Tom Bacadal has been an absolute true supporter of our program oh, yes. and our expansion in our sexual assault side of our yeah. program because we've really been able to, over the past few years, grow mm -hmm. with the outreach and mm -hmm. with the prevention well, I, I did never I, now i'm on top of this and i did not know you were out i think yeah. that's yeah. that's fabulous yeah. yes. yeah. fabulous one quick i forgot to mention we are doing an event at the college on tuesday well i i knew there was yeah an event, I, I know so. there's nothing um, there is an event on the college campus that we are doing through our sexual assault response team for the 19th circuit okay we're having a scenario walkthrough of what a sexual assault survivor goes through and we're inviting all of the students at the college that are in those fields so they can have a better understanding of what it's going to be like to deal with a sexual assault survivor when they right. enter into that field. So that's something that we're doing for the first time, so we're excited about that. And so they'll have a debriefing and they'll answer any questions at the end, but um, that's something we're really looking forward to. And what's, what is the date on that? April 18th. April 18th. From 9 to 4. No. Oh. Yes. It's good. It's like an all-day thing where they can come through and do a scenario that will take about 30 minutes, and then okay. they have a, a debriefing right after with a panel of an advocate, state attorney's office, law enforcement, a counselor, and a, a sane nurse. Okay. And yes. this is on the main campus? Yes, at the Bailey Auditorium. Gotcha. Okay. And Barbara, we're almost out I'm of sorry. time. I know you've been doing this forever, <laughs> and God bless you, both of you. Um, you. You do a great job, and um, keep up the great, great work. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Diamond. We appreciate your yes. support also all, on our coalition always. and all of our, our endeavors. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> always. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you.